Amen. I want to ask a question uh, this morning. Where do you go for help? Where do you go for help? Another question. What are you dealing with right now? What are you dealing with right now? Probably everyone in here is dealing with something whether it's a physical ailment, a financial ailment, a mental ailment, spiritual ailment. It's something that all of us are dealing with right now. And the question is, where do you go for help? Are you going to parent? Are you going to uh, coach? teacher, a grandparent, a pastor, where do you go for help? And exactly what are you dealing with right now? Something to think about. I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31. I want to use for a subject this morning, soliciting God's help. Soliciting God's help. Amen. Isaiah chapter 31, let's look at the first verse. The scripture says, woe to them. And that word woe is doom, like doom to them. That go down to Egypt for what? going down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are what? And many. That, that looks like uh, uh, some good help there. It looks like a sure thing because there's so many. Because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither do what? Seek the Lord. Where do you go for help? Do you turn to someone who you think is going to be a big help in your situation? Maybe it's a financial thing and you say, hey, this person got plenty of money and, and they, I've gotten something from them before. Do, do you turn to them? Because it appears to be a sure thing. It says here in the scripture that it turned to Egypt. And it says, and in horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. When was the last time you really saw God? And I want to tell you something. We should find ourselves seeking God often. That's right, that's right. Because the Bible says a man's life is a few days and full of trouble. Right. So we should find ourselves seeking the Lord often. The Bible said pray without ceasing. The Bible said be careful for nothing but in all things by prayer and supplication that your request be made known unto the Lord. Right. But rather, as he says here, turn to the Lord they turn to someone else. Turn to something else. And if you notice in that second verse, we find out that guess what? The Lord is wise too. Yeah. God, God has some sense too. God knows what's going on as well. Amen. In fact, He knows better than anyone because He can judge the end from the beginning. Yeah. In that second verse, it says, yet He also is wise. God is wise. Yeah, yeah. And will bring evil and will not call back his words. God don't have to go back on anything. Amen. Amen. He's true to his word. 
for it will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. God will be the one that shows that he has all power and he's in control of everything. There shouldn't be anything in this life that should bring fear upon us. Because, you know, the, 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 the choir just saying, oh, how I love Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You love Jesus, then you must trust Jesus. You must trust God for all things, if that be the case. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It must be the case. But he tells us here that they're seeking someone else, seeking help somewhere else, instead of the Holy One of Israel. In that third verse, the scripture says, now the Egyptians are what? Men. Men. And not what? They're not God. You know, it, it amazes me, and I'm not going to belabor the point because it's been hit on so many times uh, for good reason because we see it all the time. We have people that are afraid of other people in this country. We have leaders, and I'll say that that's what they are. They're in position, so we have to call them leaders. Uh, they are leaders. They are afraid of other leaders, of what harm they feel that they can bring to them and their campaign and what they're trying to accomplish. But none of us as Christians should be afraid of anyone. We don't have to take a back seat to anybody because we are children of God. And God has all power. In fact, we're joint heirs, as the scripture said, with Christ. So they're only what? Men. They're not God. I want to tell you something. I don't believe it. But even if it does happen, even if Donald Trump get back in office, so what? He's a what? He's a man. And he's not God. I don't care who you, 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 you may be going back to a certain school and wondering who your principal is going to be. And, and maybe some of you are actually waiting. On, it doesn't matter. You're looking past that person to God anyway. The Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses are what? Flesh. And not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, yeah. and he that is hoping shall fall. And in other words, the ones they heaven as well, they're going to fall. And it says, fall down, and they all shall fail. What? Together. Yeah. That's right. That's right. God is the one, again, who's all power. God has a track record of success yeah. with no failures. He's undefeated. And that's, and, and we need to know another thing. God is a jealous God. Amen. Right. They're going down to Egypt for help, and, and we're going to other people for help, or other things for help, and people have uh, uh, people to read their palms and, and, oh. and look at the zodiac signs and, and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Where do you go for help? Oh. We should be going to the Lord. Amen. Right. Verse 4 says, But thus has the Lord spoken unto me. Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. Here's a lion that has attacked whatever it is. Let's say a sheep. He's attacked his sheep and he's gnawing on this sheep. And look at what the scripture says. When the multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be what? He's not afraid. He's not even going to flinch. He's not afraid of what? Their voice. They're trying to get him off of this animal. Yeah. And he's not even paying them any attention. Right. And that's what God is saying. Look at what he said. Nor abase himself for the noise of them. You can get as loud as you want. Yeah. You're not going to affect our God. Yeah. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion. And for the hill there, God is going to fight your battles. Regardless of what these people are saying, regardless of how loud they get it, it doesn't matter. God is going to fight our battles. God, is, again, he's not moved by any of that. No one can scare God off. 
And she says here, these shepherds are trying to scare this lion off, off to pray. No one can scare our God off. Right. And because of this, we shouldn't flinch. And that's why I say it. Where do you go for help? Where do you go for help? We, we, we shouldn't flinch. Because we know that God is in control and God is on the job for us. My Lord. Verse 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts do what? Defend Jerusalem. He's like a hawk flying over us. Watching over us. Daring that any man would touch my anointing. I dare you to mess with one of my children and see what's going to happen to you. You see, again, we don't have to take a back seat. We don't have to feel inferior to anybody. Because we are peculiar people. We are God's children. We are God's anointed. He knew about us before. In fact, the Bible says he, he knew about us and chose us before the foundation of the world. We are a royal priesthood. We are somebody in Christ. I remember Martin Luther King and others was marching and, and they were saying, you know, I am a man. Yeah. You know, who, I mean, how are you going to put me down and you just like me? Right. You know, I am a man. Right. Right. So, so regardless of what the devil puts forth against us, yeah. he would not be able to overcome us. The scripture says that God be for us, who can be against us? You know, when we go to God in prayer, we should go, the Bible says, with what? Boldness. We should go before the throne of grace with confidence that God is going to do just what he said he would do. We should be able to see, and, and, and not only that, we should be able to testify about the goodness of the Lord. I know Deacon Archibald, we was just over here late, uh, kind of late last night and running each other and, and, and we was talking about something and said we don't want to be uh, like the ten that, that Jesus healed and only one came back and testified. We want to testify about the goodness of the Lord. He says that defending also he will deliver it and passing over he will preserve it. My Lord, it's good to know that the Lord is watching over us all the time. Not sometimes, but all the time. Amen. You know, the scripture said we cannot be touched. Uh, 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 he cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. That's our high priest. That's Jesus Christ. But in all points was tempted like as we are yet without sin. So in other words, he understands exactly what we are going through. Each and every one of us. Don't think that God is way off somewhere, can't see what's going on, can't hear what's going on in your life. Because he does. And he is as near, the scripture says, as our mouths. So he promises like a bird or an eagle or a hawk. Is flying over, watching over us. He said, turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. You see, we got to turn away from the things of this world. Turn unto him, as the scripture here says. And those who maybe have gotten away from God, have drifted away from God, have backslidden, have not been as faithful as one used to be then we need to repent. Amen. And that's a great thing to be able to repent of our sins. Because the scripture teaches us that there's no one that is perfect. No one. Right. So we have to repent of our sins and get back in a right relationship with God. Amen. It says, for in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold which your own hands have made unto you for what? A sin. Whatever it is that have come between you and the Lord. And sometimes if you're not careful, the Bible teaches us to walk in the Spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if we're not doing that, we'll find ourselves going the other way. And I want to tell you something. The devil is not going to start with something being right in your face. 
He'll start with a little word here, a little word there, a little picture there, a little something here, and he just just brings you along. And if you you take a bite on that, then he'll put a little something else out there. Take a bite on that, and that's how he does. And before you know it, you're way away from God. But we've got to turn back to him. We have to repent of our sins. Amen. Well, he says, for in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's bad when you don't recognize your sins. Amen. It's so important. Amen. I was listening uh, at a man this morning on an interview. I was kind of listening. I was going back and forth. And it was Mike Pence. And the woman said, he said, he made a comment, and then she said, well, you know, they were all saying, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence. And then she tried to move on. He said, oh. He said, now, I want to tell you something. There were a lot of patriots out there, a lot of people that loved this country, a lot of God-fearing people about it just going on and on. And I said, and he, he said, basically, I want to classify all of them, you know, <laughs> under that banner, if you would. But you know, somebody said, birds of a feather. <laughs> it was right out there with them. So, but, but, but my point is, and I thought about something. And, and I'm looking at this, and there's several verses says, I've made them to you for a sin. I thought about something. I don't want to be wrong and think I'm right. And I said to myself, I want to ask the church if there's something I'm doing wrong or something I said wrong, please come to me and cry. Amen. Tell me. And I'm serious. Right. Because, I, you know, that is a sad position to be in. Yeah. Not speaking the truth. Yeah. We got to call a spade a spade. That's right. That's right. Just tell it like it is. And if you're wrong, then what? You're wrong. You repent. Thank God we can repent. And the Bible tells us he will not remember it anymore. We were just having Bible study last week. Dealing with that same thing, being forgiven of our sin. And the Bible tells us that he remembers it no more. And you can be, you can allow the devil to bring it up into your mind. And you may start being upset about it. For what? And when you go to God about it, God is going to say, what are you talking about? Yeah. Why? Why would God say that? Because he, it's over. It's over. He doesn't remember it anymore. So don't go to God about something that you've already asked him to forgive you of. Now, if you want to give a place to the devil and allow the devil to have you thinking about something bad that you did and you didn't ask some sin you committed that you didn't ask God to forgive you of, and that's up to you. But you don't have to do that. As a child of God, we've learned the scripture said, He has forgiven us and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And as you think about that, I mean, why would anyone not want to follow the Lord? Because He sustains us. He forgives us when we're wrong. Just, I mean, people will remember something bad that you have done to them. Isn't that something? Yeah. They may say, I accept your apology, but physically, and they may mean that in their heart, and hopefully they do, and hopefully we do, but physically, in their mind, it's, it's dead. It comes up because they're only human, but God is God. And when he said it's over, he's forgiven us, he has forgiven us. Yeah. So we got to acknowledge our sin and ask him to forgive us. And the scripture says that forsake that sin. As we begin to close, in that eighth verse it says, Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted. My Lord. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign 
saith the Lord, whose fire is on Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. The scripture here tells us what actually happens. I'm going to ask you to turn just a few chapters over to chapter 37. Chapter 37. You got the uh, when we read back, we see all of these threats that he was making <clears throat> to, to Hezekiah and, and, and just, you know, telling the people, you better not be putting your trust in Hezekiah. You better realize what we have done and how successful we have been, you know, in warring against man. You put your trust in Hezekiah and you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble. So we ask you to turn over to uh, chapter 37. And let's look this at a couple of verses here. Look down, <clears throat> all the way down to verse 36. Verse 36. It says, Isaiah 37, 36. Let me go back. 31. And again, verse 8, the Lord said, then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, and it says, not of a mighty man. Going back to 31 and 8. Not of a mighty man. And remember, this is how we began. And putting our trust in man. They're not God. Isaiah 37 and 36, the scripture says, Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and I'm going to say eight, but that's what it is. Four score and five thousand. So, a hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, the they were all dead corpse. When the people got up the next morning, all they saw were dead men lying all over the place. And I want you to understand something. This is recorded in history. But guess what they left out? The angel of the Lord. This is recorded in history, in books, but they don't tell you that it was the angel of the Lord that did this. My wife and I was <clears throat> uh, watching television just a day or two ago, and they were talking about the plagues. <laughs> Excuse me. The ten plagues <laughs> that the Lord sent uh, on, in Egypt. Remember the, the frogs and the lice and, you know, and all of this? And, um, and anyway, they were trying to explain by science how all this stuff came about. Uh, yeah. And then they got kind of a little sticking point. They said, well, what about Pharaoh's son? You know, what caused him to die? Yeah. But, but anyway, <clears throat> they were not recording history that it was the angel of the Lord that did this. Right. Verse 37 says, so Sennacherib, king of, of Assyria, <clears throat> departed and went and returned and dwell in Nineveh. So <clears throat> this is the guy that was doing all the bad talk. Yeah. And now he's been defeated and he's gone back. And look where he goes. As we asked you earlier, where do you go for help? It says, and it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his what? His God. That's who he went to. <laughs> he's with Nisroch. Who do you go to? And sometimes, you know, who we may even turn to the person in the mirror. Yeah. Don't look at yourself. Don't look to yourself for help. We got all kind of self-help programs, but don't turn to yourself. He, he turned to Nisra, his God. Yeah. And there are so many. I was <clears throat> talking to uh, Sister uh, Kyle. She's out of town today uh, in Bible study. And we were talking about, she was saying that, you know what, uh, people don't want to use Jesus' name. You know, they, they say this, God, I said that's because we have so many religions and there are so many different gods. <clears throat> but there's only way to the true and living God and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. So here he is serving one of these phony or false gods. But everyone turns to someone for help or something for help. And it says that Adrenalet and Shazrezer, his sons, smote him with the sword and they escaped into the land 
of Amenia and Eshadon, his son reigned in his stead. So this man went back while he was in there dealing with this false god. His own kin came in and killed him. You see, again, he had come against God's people. He had talked down God himself and telling the people, bringing fear into their life, into their hearts about what we have done, who we have slaughtered down through the years, and we're going to take you guys out too. But they went into prayer, went into fasting and praying, <clears throat> and we could see the response here from God. The key this morning, our, our uh, subject soliciting God for help. Whatever it is that comes up in your life, we should turn to God. Amen. And thank God that we have something. And you know the devil, we have an adversary, the devil. And the devil comes against us, <clears throat> against the very powerful thing that God has given us, and that's prayer. You see, when we pray, we got to understand that we are praying to God. You're not praying to anyone else. You are praying to God himself. And God hears all of our prayers. And if we are sincere about what we are praying in God, will show us. He will answer our prayers. And you can even ask God to help you to pray. Lord, help my unbelief. And the Spirit will give you the utterance to say what needs to be said to God. But we shouldn't turn to anything else. And another thing, wait on the Lord. The children uh, uh, quoted Psalms 27 last Sunday. And that last verse said, wait on the Lord, be of the courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And I think that's one of the things that the devil try to use against us. And that is, he laps time from when we pray until God does what he's going to do as far as the answer. Now God is working all the time. That's right, that's right. Because if he wasn't working all the time, we would never see answers to prayer. Because he's doing what? He's sustaining us. He's renewing our strength. He's encouraging us. He's reminding us. That he is what? He is a faithful God. Right. Amen. On Wednesday night, we were studying in, in that last uh, uh, chapter in 2 Thessalonians where Paul was asking for prayer. And then we searched many scriptures where, and we know what a great child of God that Paul was, but we went through many scriptures where he was asking for prayer, pray for me. You know, so we ask power in prayer. Right. And just to think, all of us here today, God's children, we got access to his throne. Amen. Amen. That's right. All we have to do is go down in prayer. Amen. I didn't tell the deacon Archibald last night, but when he came in, I was, it was dark. I was on my knees in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> And we should be depending, totally depending on God for whatever it is. Don't tell me you're not dealing with something. I tell you what, maybe you aren't dealing with anything, but it won't be long. You will be. You will be. And I'm urging you today. I'm pleading with you today. I'm asking you today. Don't go down to Egypt. I don't care how strong uh, and how firm things look or how sure things look. Don't, don't go down to Egypt. Go to God. Amen. He's calling us. His arms are outstretched. He's encouraging us to cast our cares on Him because He cares for us. And what I would love for you to do when you go to God, come back and tell us about it. I love to hear, and we've heard and we should hear many more right. testimonies about the goodness of God. Because you can't do it, and I can't do it. But God can. 
He's able, the Bible says, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask. And lastly, I want to just touch a little bit on our faith. Yeah. Where is your faith? Yeah. If you're not going to God in prayer, then you're lacking faith. Right. We got to believe. Somebody said, uh, uh, some men see things as they are and ask why. And some men see things as they never were and ask, why not? Yeah. Bobby Kennedy, why not? Why not me? Right. When you read the scripture, look what God has done from cover to cover for his people. And we just saw what he did, a mighty miracle here by the hand of his angels. Yeah. God is able. Amen. Let us hold our heads up. Let us look up to God. There are, there are strongholds that may be in our lives. In fact, all of us are dealing with something. The Bible says there's no temptation that which has taken you, but that which is common to man. So the devil is always presenting something for us in our lives. But God gives us that way of escape. All of us. He gives us, just like he did Joseph. He could have stayed there, but he took God's way of escape. And I want to tell you, God wants to bless all of us. Amen. He wants to bless all of us. But we can't receive his blessings if we are not praying and if we are not praying according to his will. Amen. God wants what's best for us. You know, I was just thinking the other day how blessed. I've been thinking a whole lot, and I'm trying to close, but I've been thinking a whole lot about my mother and my father and how they made us go to church. And how my mother was a mother and my father was a true father to me. And I'm so glad. And I'm sure y'all got the same thing or you wouldn't be here. And thank God because I know I have been blessed tremendously by the grace of God. Nothing I've done, don't deserve it, but I thank God for the right mindset in this life. To know that He gets the glory. And that's why I pray every day that God will get the glory. Because that's who me and you should be clinging to. Clinging to the Lord and not some man. I want to tell you something. Don't put your trust in man. So many men have failed so many. Not just women. They failed women tremendously. But have failed people, period. Yeah. So let's put our trust in the true and living God. Yeah. And, and ask Him to put that right person in our lives yeah. that we can grow with in this life. Whom hmm. will you turn to in the midst of the trouble? I hope and pray that you go to God in prayer. And when you pray to God, study His Word. Amen. Right. Meditate on His Word. Amen. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. God loves you. God wants what's best for us. And we got to understand that His Word is not grievous. Amen. And I want to tell you, there are some, I heard some, there are some preachers that are actually trying to figure out another way to do things. And there's no other way but God's way. We cannot cut corners. God, if God wasn't able, he wouldn't have asked us. Or he wouldn't have commanded us to do certain things. So let's do it God's way. And I promise you, you will be blessed. The doors of the church are open.